Hey what's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is PD Marie and today I wanted to do a bit of a different video. I feel like I say that in all my videos. Um, I know a lot of times I can be really like crazy and weird and upbeat, but I wanted to switch it up a bit and slow it down just a tad. But I apologize if this is a bit of a chatty video and that's not really your thing it's just gonna be a bit laid back and just talking and yeah hopefully you can find some of this interesting i am not new to anxiety or depression but i am new to the journey of getting better i have just kind of suffered from it for a really long time and i just told myself to accept it just this is gonna be your life deal with it um so i'm new to turning the page and trying to actually do something so any advice I would totally be open to it any support would be amazing so I wanted to talk about my journey with my anxiety um, anxiety I know is different for almost every single person who deals with it I know the signs the symptoms the triggers how they deal with everything is so customized to that person um, but I figured I'd share my experiences and my journey and maybe you guys can relate or help me out I didn't have anxiety my whole life I was typically nervous about certain things or confined spaces I think to a certain degree always make some people uncomfortable um, but for the most part I was okay for a long time um sorry it wasn't until i went through a death where i noticed how unexpected life can be and i know it sounds cliche but i realized that i could not handle surprises the unexpected um being unprepared all of that made me want to crawl out of my skin. I never wanted to feel the way I did the day that person died. So I think my body's natural defense mechanism just started making me want to be more prepared for reality. So I started freaking out about just wanting to know every single detail and wanting to just be prepared for any situation that may or may not happen whether that be um, an illness that may have happened so any hypochondriacs out there will know if you have a headache or you know you feel like a pimple on your back or something and you go WebMD it um, you're probably gonna come up with a list of anything from pimples to tumors and I would basically prepare myself in case it was a tumor because I didn't want to ever feel that shock, that surprise again. I always wanted to be prepared. So my first anxiety attack was when I was about 20. Um, it was about maybe nine or 10 months after the death that ex I had experienced occurred. Um, it was completely unexpected, as most anxiety attacks are. Um, and it was actually on my 20th birthday, and I was getting ready to go out for this huge birthday dinner. And I just had like probably the most friends in a while come out to celebrate my birthday with me, and it just felt amazing. And I had friends traveling from, you know, back home a few hours away to come to my school and go to this huge birthday dinner. On the way out to get a cab to go to dinner, I just started feeling really hot. And I mean, my birthday's in June, so it's not unreasonable to feel warm because it's in the summer. But, um, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And then my chest started to feel extremely tight. Um, but tight in the sense where, like, it almost felt as if, um, like, my like there I had like a girdle on my chest but more like upper chest where girdles are normally on your lower it almost felt like someone was squeezing me together and my first reaction was to like unclip my bra or to like unclip like my zipper for my dress and it just felt like I couldn't even 
move because it was so tight and then of course following that um felt like I couldn't breathe because obviously I'm feeling constricted and I got really lightheaded and this all happened within a matter of about two to three minutes and um then panic mode went in and at this point I'm still not even thinking it's an anxiety attack I'd never experienced one I felt awful because we had dinner reservations and we were already running late and um my friends were just really supportive. They were just saying, you know, go back inside, like just go take a minute to breathe. And maybe they knew better than I knew because I had no idea what was going on. But they were like, just go, go back in the dorm and just breathe. And I had my mother with me, so she was just super supportive and she deals with anxiety as well. So she brought me back in the dorm while all my friends waited outside for me. And I got undressed and my mom just helped me breathe and just kept breathing and I was sobbing and I was scared and eventually um, through the breathing um, you know I started to calm down a bit and my heartbeat returned to a normal pace and I changed and I got into like leggings and like a long tunic which is so disappointing because I'd had that birthday outfit picked out for months but um, at that point it was just about being comfortable and just wanting to still enjoy my birthday. So yeah, anxiety attacks are really scary because some of the symptoms are so common and can be associated with so many other health issues that I just, I didn't think it was an anxiety attack and it wasn't until I had had many anxiety attacks later I realized, oh my god, that was my first anxiety attack. Um, I just thought, you know, wow, I just, my dress got really tight and I just couldn't breathe and I just started hyperventilating. I just didn't know. So yeah, like I said, my symptoms um, for anxiety, they include um, the pressure of the chest, uh, hard to breathe, um, lightheadedness. I particularly get um, like a tingly feeling. I don't know if many people get this. I've been told it's really weird. It almost feels like needles almost on my feet, um, especially when it's a shocking situation that puts me into an anxiety attack. Shaking uncontrollably is huge. I won't notice that I'm shaking most of the time. It'll usually be either a friend who is just like, oh my gosh, you're shaking a lot, like do you need me to do something? Or someone who tries to like comfort me and just kind of hold my arm and I'll see them just kind of like bouncing off of me and I'm like, whoa, you are really shaking. But I don't think I feel it. It's just my body's reaction to the stress that I'm going through. My triggers are surprises, any kind of unexpected situation or scenario that I'm thrown into. I really, 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 really like being prepared for things. It's totally ridiculous to ever think that you can prepare for everything. But the death that I experienced um, was completely unexpected. And I was so traumatized from it being so unexpected that I just never recovered health in a healthy way so my way again of just recovering was to always be on top of it so my body never has to deal with that shock again it's not healthy I'm very aware of that. being confined um, confined spaces freak me out so a lot of times this is relevant for public transportation um, cars trains buses planes, all of that where I know that I don't have the freedom to get out at my own will, like does a number on my mind. I just don't like feeling like I can't get out if I need to, especially if I start to go into an anxiety attack or I start to deal with, I don't know, a health issue. I like knowing that I can get out if I need to. So typically like in classrooms I will sit on like the side closest to the door so in case I ever did start to experience anxiety or anything else I could always just go right out the door without causing too much of a disturbance. It's another thing with my anxiety. I hate causing disturbances. Disturbances. I hate causing disturbances so I even though I know people are very willing to help and are very understanding and sympathizing, 
I hate being the one who causes this ruckus so I just want to like bolt out of the room and kind of deal with it by myself in like a corner so I don't disturb anyone or I don't like freak out anyone because I think that more people like kind of coming to me at the moment I think freaks me out not when it's happening but just the thought of like drawing so much attention freaks me out I have what I like to call residual anxiety I don't know if that's actually a proper term it's honestly just what I call it residual anxiety is um, basically where I am put in a really really high anxious situation some situation where I know wow this really is one of my like triggers for anxiety I'm really prone to being very uncomfortable in this situation so I go through that situation and I'm under the high stress and for some reason it doesn't cause an anxiety attack and I'm just kind of internalizing all that stress and all that worry and all that fear but no anxiety attack comes out of it and it could be an hour later could be two days later it could be a week later and boom major anxiety attack this recently happened when I was in Miami a situation happened at the airport where it was really stressful and we weren't able to board a plane for like a day and a half I'm not even joking and I just got I mean I was internalizing stress for literally about 30 hours 30 hours on and off and you know I had minor anxiety here or there and of course you're overwhelmed and you're freaking out but I didn't have a proper anxiety attack until I got home after the plane, after the drive home, as I'm like just eating some pasta on my bed, that's when I had my full blown out anxiety attack when I was calm and I was just happy to be home. And I was like, ha, ah, my body finally relaxed. And I think that's when my brain was like, you forgot, didn't you? And it hit me. I know I'm still a novice as far as me dealing with my anxiety, but a few things that I have learned that have helped me throughout um, anxiety or just attacks or even my depression definitely realizing that you're not trapped um, this is more so for the confinement issue if you just look around if you sometimes windows are great if you see a window if you just look around and notice that you're not trapped sometimes if it's in a classroom I see the door okay I know I can get out the door if I need to just being aware you have options. If you need to take a break, if you need to go get a drink of water, if you need to go have a breather, go take that breather. Uh-uh. Don't let anyone tell you any differently. Go take that breather. Because the more you feel trapped and the more you feel like it's getting not normal, the more you're going to freak out. So if you start to feel little things, take a minute, listen to yourself, and just get your, try to naturally get yourself to a happy place again and um, that's just something I noticed will help with me. Anxiety attacks can be super scary and dealing with them yourself is even scarier because you're gonna psych yourself out. Your body, your mind is an overload and it's not processing information. So as you're trying to just deal, all these things are coming at you and you don't have enough time to catch up and it's just really helpful if you could have someone there to just help you get back to a normal state or just kind of even coach you. Sometimes I find having someone there to just remind me of what it is that's happening um, helps because I can't remind myself when I'm in anxiety attacks. I can't. Um, I'm just, my brain is boom, boom, boom. It's, really, it's going at it. But if that person is just kind of like on repeat, like, you know, just keep breathing. You're going to get through this. Your mind is just doing this. Like, you're going to get through this. It's dramatic dramatically helpful my biggest advice for anybody suffering from anxiety and I know I can't give you much because I am starting my own journey myself my biggest advice to you would be do not ignore it do not accept it don't have to just live with it there's so many different things you can do to make yourself happier I think I've just told myself that it's just something that you deal with and this will be your life and for a really long time I just kind of believed that and you know there were certain 
doctors or therapists who kind of threw medicine at me or just said, you know, this is just kind of what people go through. And I just accepted it. And it wasn't until very recently I noticed how much it was affecting my life. I am scared to take on opportunities. That I think would be great. I am scared to go on adventures. I'm scared sometimes to leave my own house. A friend will invite me to dinner and I'm scared to go to a restaurant sometimes. Like, it didn't hit me until this year how much it has taken over my life. The simplest things that I turned down and I end up just sitting and waiting for the anxiety attack that may not ever happen. I ignored it and I'm so mad at myself for not letting myself live. And f that. I'm not letting it take over my life anymore. It's crazy. And the simple solution someone told me was just like, you go out, you do those things. You know what? F your anxiety. You go out anyway. And it's like, yeah, I could I could go out and I could push myself to do things, but that doesn't mean, you know, my anxiety's gonna go away. I want to really actually work on getting rid of it so I can push myself to do these things that I love. This month, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month and I don't know, something prompted me to just start researching and looking up other people's blogs and other people's journeys and something happened this month where I just said, wow, I have to change. And I decided to sign myself for therapy. There's so many different ways to deal with it. And my way may not be your way whatsoever. I know everyone's, again, everyone deals with it completely differently. Everyone has a different thing they're dealing with, even if it all is labeled depression or anxiety. So there are just so many different methods now from therapy and yoga and meditation and there is the option of medication. There's just so many things to help you be happy. I am so ready to start living again. I am so ready to not be scared. I'm scared of myself. Like I'm so ready to not be scared anymore and I cannot wait until that relief is finally here where I could say like there's like, my mind isn't holding me back anymore. It's such a bully. <laughs> it's such a bully. It, it talks me out of doing so much and I just can't wait until it's gone. So anyways guys, I know this was a super long chatty video. I just knew I had to vent to you guys and I just think, again, this platform is awesome because you could just get so much support and so much understanding and you never know who is going to come into your life or what you may say may affect someone else and God I was just in the fields today and I put on the purple lipstick and just the, the something was happening where I was just like oh my god like I need to talk about this I started rolling the camera and this became of it so so thank you to those who stuck through this video and Hopefully, you all can see me come out really, 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 really happy throughout this journey. That's what I'm hoping. At some point throughout my YouTube journey, you see a much, much happier me come out. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys soon.